Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, earlier this week, I went to my optometrist to get my annual checkup, see how I'm doing with my eyes, and I got a pretty good checkup, and it just changed a little bit, and so I realized, well, I'm good to go. I don't really need a new prescription this year. Commonly, or I should say historically, I would get a new prescription, but this is nice to see though, just a smidgen, just a skosh, uh, different, and I'm fine. So th praise God for that. What's the deal with our vision? I want to talk about that because when I was a high schooler, <clears throat> I didn't know that my vision was getting worse in that I was not able to see the chalkboard. In fact, uh, or I should say overhead board, and there was a chalkboard. You know, remember the chalkboard folks and an overhead. <clears throat> so in my science class, the teacher was talking about whatever it was and writing things on the chalkboard or in the overhead. And I constantly had to turn to my neighbor and say, now, what is it they're writing? I can't see that. And I don't see what he's doing. And then the teacher got so frustrated after a while because I was not seeing it. I'd raise my hand and have him repeat it. He gave me his glasses and I put it on my eyes and I was just amazed. I had no idea that my, my, my eyes, my ability to see had been diminished. Things uh, were blurry and I didn't know that. And seeing through the glasses, everything was clear. It was like a, a new moment. So I, of course, went to get my eyes checked for the first time, and sure enough, I got fitted for glasses, and I was amazed at what I could see now. I was like, wow. And you know this, if you're a person, remember when you first got glasses, if you have glasses, the trees, they have leaves on them, and the birds, you can see them even when they're in the air, not just on the ground. The detail was amazing. I was just stunned. That was as I, I think, a senior in high school. Now, our vision is important to us, this kind of vision, but there's also a heart vision that we need to be aware of. Let me read to you part of the gospel today where the vision of Christ's disciples were not quite clear. We read in Mark chapter 9, verses 30 and on. This is from Sunday's homily. It reads, And Jesus and his disciples left there and began on a journey through Galilee, but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, and this is key, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. But they did not understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to question him. Folks, the apostles, the closest people, Christ's disciples, were told exactly what was going to happen before it happened, and they didn't have the eyes to see, and they didn't have the ears to hear. Their hearts were closed. Now, many of you may or may not know that I actually have now hearing aids myself. It's like a repeat of the whole thing with the glasses. I did not recognize that I was losing my hearing, that it was like an eventual or a gradual thing that I got kind of lulled into the normal or what I consider normal dullness of my life in that there was never any crispiness to what I was hearing. I have a stereo at the house. I love to watch movies. And I was noticing, has the stereo changed? What's going on? What is the deal that it's not so crisp? Or often in my meetings with people, I was asking, now what is that you said? Then I realized, I think I might have a hearing issue. And it came in gradually. I didn't even know about it. So I went to the, well, my doctor. And I asked him if I should go see a hearing specialist. And sure enough, that is what I did. And I was able to find out that I do have a moderate to mild hearing loss in the upper range. And it's, it's kind of comical, I think, because I've been in weeks and weeks before this helping people with their hearing aids get onto our system so they could hear what's going on in our, our sound system for mass. And now I am on that side. But I must tell you, this one was a little harder. The, the glasses were great, but getting hearing aids was difficult for me because when I grew up, the people that were behind the, the kids with uh, actual difficulties, physical difficulties, or old people were the ones that had hearing aids. And of course, then I'm, I got an ego. I'm thinking, but I'm not that person. I'm not old. I'm not dumb. I'm none of those things. I realized, wait a second. I recall talking to my mother and she was in her late 70s, 80s, and she was going, her hearing was very bad, but she was in denial. So I took her to a, a diner 
on purpose for lunch and I asked her, do you hear the clanking of the things going on behind you? Did you hear that person talking? There was a little commotion. She had no idea. I'm like, there it is. Because we've been talking to her about it. And she's like, no, 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 I don't need hearing aids. And I convinced her that I think you do. You're missing out on a lot of things. The world is happening. There's so amazing things happening. But you're partially going deaf. So she finally gave in and had a hearing test. And sure enough, she had a pretty serious hearing loss. But I remember after her getting hearing aids, she said that was one of the best things she's ever done. Her life changed in the sense that she'd go into groups of people. And like I have an out experience, you go in and you're not sure what they're all saying. And especially when there's a concophony of people, it's really hard to hear. So here I am now, I'm 57, and I recognize I too have hearing loss. So I had to just swallow my pride and go forward and get those hearing aids. And I have them. They're very hard to see. In fact, I'm amazed when I've seen them before how small they are. And so these are very small. And what a difference it is to hear the high things in Mass. In fact, you know, the, the S's and the T's and things like that, or even the crinkling of paper. I remember even just putting on my jacket. I was like, ooh, that's so sharp and so hard to hear. But of course, then my mind gets used to that sound because I'm not used to the sounds on a constant basis. And what a wonderful thing it is to now see and to hear better. This relates to the apostles and our own life. Where are we not seeing where God is working in our lives? Where are we not hearing where he's calling us or calling us to not just be, but to what to think and what to do? Friends, my, I want to think about this. Think about where we may be obstinate to the call of Christ. There's a lot of hard sayings. Uh, this last week we heard, love your enemies. This was during the daily mass readings. Love your enemies. That's the hardest thing ever that Jesus said, at least for me, because I have my enemies and I'm sure you have yours. Last week's Friday Reflection, I talked about this. So let's be mindful of where we might be losing some of our sight and being losing some of our hearing in our spiritual life. Are we not praying as we should? Maybe we're missing mass on purpose. Maybe we, we have stopped thinking about how God wants to do things and really just said, and asking our own self what we want to do regardless of what God wants. This is an opportunity to then be people like God wants us to be. We hear it further in the reading for this weekend. That's the gospel that was in Mark. But in James we hear, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceful, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits without con inconstancy or insincerity. These are the fruits of living a life. And I think we all want this. We all want to have mercy in our life. We all want to be peaceable or have peace. We, deep down inside, we want to be pure, but we struggle because we are sinners. Mercy can be found in the confessional. Mercy can be found at home when we recognize we've talked poorly to our loved ones at home because we can still ask for forgiveness. When we do these things, when we sin, there is an option for us. We, there is good news. We can go and see Jesus. We can do that in the sacrament of confession, or if it's a smaller sin, go personally in maybe a quiet place, wherever you'd like, and just ask God for, for forgiveness. Try it. It's a first step for some of you, and maybe it's something that's going to come easy to you. But whatever it may be, it's important, I think, that as Christians, we do these things. Folks, I'm, praying, I'm going to be doing the homily this weekend. I ask that you pray for me. These are just some initial uh, reflections on my homily. And I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to go with it. So pray for me. And I'll see you this weekend. God bless you all. Bye-bye.